Okay, so we're back again, a little bit later than uh, anticipated, but um, I fed these two, so they should be happy. And crazy Cora needs to chase her tail after she's eaten, so. Do um, you want to turn around, Ollie? Turn around, come here. Or you want to lie down there? All right, so let's have a look and we'll discuss uh, Ollie's ERT that he had this morning. Now, yeah, just wait until she settles down. Um, when you turn around, okay, stop. Okay, probably not the best to do a video after they've just eaten. <laughs> you want to come around this, Ollie? You can come here. Come over here. Come over this side. That's it. Turn around. Turn around. That's it. That's a good boy. All right. So, um, yeah. So from from yesterday, last night, um, he uh, he vomited after his dinner, which I. Pretty sure he's never done that before but Ollie's always been one to be quite well highly sensitive and if if he's worrying about things or there's there's something going on with him then he it tends to affect um, any kind of mostly his stomach more than anything um, so it wasn't I wasn't gonna do an ART very late last night it well it was it was really late and um, he, uh, he was obviously suffering a fair bit, but um, I just thought, no, I can't do it. It was, I, I needed to get to have, needed to, to go and have some sleep. <laughs> do you have to? Come here. Can you relax? Can you relax? Hey? All right, so we started off this morning. It was a late, uh, late uh, morning rise this morning and let me just scroll down to Ollie's info all right so yeah so from last night as mentioned in um, the photos that I posted um, with the ERT that I did sort of before and after um, I mentioned that um, you know while I while I took him out um, he was actually eating grass quite obsessively. I mean, he, he normally does eat a fair amount of grass and <laughs> It's like where's her off button? Seriously, come here hey. uh, But it was really over the top last night um, Yeah, okay And as mentioned I gave him um, two doses of the China homeopathic 30C potency um, and that was about sort of the first one and then I did the second one about a half an hour later so when we went in to do the the session I always check to make sure that um, you know that even the animal also can sense to it and yes I got a I got the go-ahead to uh, to do that for him um, so what came up first was in, uh, energy imbalances and he's a good boy aren't you? He's a good boy. Uh, there was a misalignment and it showed up um, both his lungs and both the lungs were unhappy and the cause for the unhappy lungs uh, was dehydration. And he wasn't drinking enough, so I actually um, checked that uh, it was either, I mean, I know that the water, it couldn't be the water because they do drink very high quality water, um, but he wasn't drinking enough and that was that was the downfall. Um, even though I balanced that up, the lungs were still unhappy and uh, so there was an association with those, with the unhappy lungs and it was a colour de deficiency. So again, when we look at um, any of uh, imbalances in the body, uh, we're talking energy and colour has a frequency. And uh, it was quite interesting that he's actually had um, a colour deficiency before. And guess what colour it is? 
if you can imagine like the way he went crazy uh, with the grass last night um, it's the color green uh, so we um, I balanced him up for that and found then the lungs uh, returned back to their happiness um, from that balance of uh, balancing the green uh, which also then helped with um, getting the dehydration better too. Um, so that was it for energy imbalances. And then we went on to, there were um, some blocked emotions. And the first one that uh, wanted to be released and found was um, inherited vulnerability. And that came from his father. And, um, and, then there was a second one, which again was a, an inherited emotion, and this was um, unsupported from the from his father as well. And usually, when I'm doing these two, I'll always check to see if we need to know any more information. So it was no difference in this. And I mean, usually with inherited, you can you can track it back to whatever ancestor it was. And what I found, and, and then with animals um, and dogs, we can look at it whether it can be an, an association with another animal um, where that trauma or the emotion began, or it can be with people. And in Ollie's case, with these two inherited emotions, unfortunately, it was... Um, uh, humans from from his father his biological father uh, he had those emotions which then Ollie um, sort of tends to it's like running in the family kind of thing um, and that energy of those two emotions affected Ollie so quite sad actually when you sort of think about um, you know when, when particularly with um, pets and their associations um, are connected to people. So, I mean, I don't know the full extent of, um, you know, his background and where he came from um, in relation to his breeding, but it just seems to me that, um, you know, there was no, no honest, genuine care and love for the breeding of, of these Border Collies. Um, but anyway, he's in a happier home now, aren't you? And it's good. So, yep, we, we did that. Uh, where do we go from there? Okay, oh, I checked. I check, And usually when we're releasing inherited emotions, um, we can actually check the release from where it came from. And in Ollie's case... Uh, we can also check his sibling, siblings, which I did. And so it was, I checked, just leave him alone. Come on, come around here. Um, I checked whether they were released from his father as well as his siblings and found out that actually his siblings were affected as well. And um, I checked to, to see if it actually um, had been released from the father and the, the siblings, and it was. So that's really good news. And usually that's the way it works anyway. Sometimes it doesn't. I have found that with um, some people, uh, actually one, one client, where the release of an inherited emotion did, was not released from um, where it came from. Um, anyway, you leave it as, as it is because you can't interfere with that. All right, so then we went on to identify there was more to be released in the way of blocked emotions. Um, and the next slot that came up was um, Ollie's own emotion of dread. Really? <laughs> Ow. Hello. I know. She wants all the attention, doesn't she? <laughs> it's crazy, it is. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, it found out that um, he had his own emotion that we found out more information about, which was dread. Um, and dread is emo an emotion that's quite heavy duty. It's kind of like this impending doom that, that sort of you're expecting that's going to happen. 
Um, and I actually found out more information about this. Some, some of the trapped emotions that are identified, you don't need any more information, but for some reason this one, I could find out more information. And um, it brought up the information of um, him being before he actually turned two. And, um, and that was around the time uh, he was surrendered. He was surrendered to uh, one of the dog or the working dog rescues. And, and at that time, I just wrote in brackets here because you, I sort of notice and I observe, you know, as we're going through a, a session, things occurring. Um, and they occur because the energy is shifting within the body. And I, I was, because I was on the floor while I was doing the ERT with Ollie, um, he had quite loud <laughs> um, stomach digestive noises happening. And that's a good sign. Um, so, you know, and that, and that didn't last all that long. It was just quite a, a loud moment. And then, and then it sort of settled down. Um, so then after that, we were able to release that. And then the next one was um, inherited and we found out that this inherited came from his mother and it was love unreceived. Um, but the, so when I looked into it, we could get some more information out. And again, it came up with his mother um, relating to humans. So not having the that you know not feeling love from from the human pack, um, again very sad. Uh, able to release that. Also checked that it was released from his mum and the siblings. Um, then the next one we found was inherited hopelessness, and this was from his father's mother's father's mother. Um, didn't need to know any more information about that. And, um, again, we checked, we checked, well, I checked the, uh, his ancestors. So that whole line right up until the, the last mother. Yeah, it's okay. I know you don't, don't want me to stop, do you? Uh... Yep, so really, and the ancestors as well as um, the energy had had affected si his siblings. So we checked them all, um, and the release through Ollie was able to be released through um, the ancestors as well as the siblings, which was great. Uh, so we did that, and then nothing else was um, was identified or needed to be balanced or released. Then it was all, all necessary and all done, finalised. Uh, and then we just checked that um, his protective, protective shield was, you know, on. And that's that sort of energetic, physical sort of, uh, for, his, for his physical safety kind of thing. Um, and it was already in place and it was at 100%. So that, that was good news. So then I, I'd finished his session and then he just um, walked over to the, the sliding door and he just, you know, he, he relaxed. And usually that's what happens after a session is that because the energy's um, changing and shifting and recalibrating, um, they will just allow that to occur and, and, and they'll sort of have, have a, a short rest. Now, because of um, this dehydration problem, and I've always known that he's he's never been one to really drink a lot, um, or if he's if he's been exercising a bit and um, he's doing other things, he tends to not go and drink. Anyway, but I let him let him have a little bit of a rest, and then um, I then left the room, and he just followed anyway, which was good. And, um, and then I sort of encouraged him into the lounge room where I've got another bowl of water and um, he drank a fair bit then. So that was, that was really good. And um, yeah, he's, he's been, he's quite, um, he's quite happy now. So happy because he's had his dinner <laughs> as well. All right, so um, yeah, we'll just sort of see how he goes. I'm also going to, um, just watch, because he's always been one to also burp a bit, uh, which is quite unusual for a dog. 
Um, usually it's the other way around, isn't it? Um, but I've never found the dogs that I've had um, have that problem at the other end. Um, but yeah, with him, it's because I think it's because of his very sensitive nature. Um, that stomach is um, is not quite balanced yet. And uh, so I'm going to look at also the, the homeopathics that can help with that. So we'll get him onto that. And, um, and also I did buy some specific homeopathics for his nasal drip. Uh, and he has a nasal drip because he, he did have uh, discoid lupus when, um, when he was surrendered. And um, it, uh, yeah, poor nose was pretty corroded from that. Um, and because of the immune system response to, uh, to the effects of what he suffered with, um, he just gets this nasal, clear nasal drip. I mean, he doesn't have an infection or anything, but he just has this nasal drip and it's just that oversensitive mucus lining. So I'm just going to see if hopefully the, um, some homeopathics might help, um, clear that up. So I'll let you know how that goes when I, when I get onto that. And then we did Cora. So we had a little bit of a break before I did Cora. Um, but she was sort of like giving me these... <laughs> these eyes of like, well, yeah, it's my turn now, mum. And normally she doesn't, um, it wasn't like I felt there was anything that needed to be addressed, um, but it was just because she was looking at me and it was like, okay, we'll just set, see if, uh, you know, she, uh, if she, if she, she requires a, a session. And yep, she did. And then she came in, she walked in and sort of just lay down while I um, went through it. So what we found in her was, uh, well, actually, she has been, I'll go into a little bit of information of, like, her behaviour lately. I mean, it's normal for, for her, because she's a border collie, she is very overly sensitive to external stimuli. So, of course, if she's outside, you know, and there's movement, there's birds, there's roos, <laughs> she's looking at me going, what, where? <laughs> Um, you know, she's, she, and she, she hi highly guards her backyard. Um, so always barking at stuff and, but lately it's been, um, over the top. So I don't know whether it was that, that, um, sort of brought this on and that's why she even thought that she needed one. <laughs> anyway, we found out and she, and she consented to it, of course. And of course I wouldn't, um, continue if if um, she didn't give me the consent and that sometimes happens if I check to see if they do need it and if they don't need it then I won't do it um, so it's all you know it's all about love and respect um, you know their boundaries as well and uh, anyway so we went on uh, and did her ERT which found out that um, the imbalances needed to be looked at first uh, which are energetical imbalances, which can be from a myriad of different um, things. Um, primarily for the body, like it sort of looks more at the body uh, in the way of its energy. So first of all, um, the imbalance was the category of energies. And we found out that it, she had an inflammatory energy imbalance, um, which was associated with a pathogen. And it was mold. Now, with mold, mold can come in sort of in a different way, and it's it's not so much the mold itself, but if it gets internal, the mold um, is dangerous in its breakdown or its or its byproducts, its waste products, and that's what causes the symptoms. Um, even though Cora didn't look like she had the symptoms of. Uh, of it because she sort of you know she seemed quite energetic um, but I checked to sort of see the symptoms um, and the only way I can really do that is obviously with the pendulum um, and and the symptoms that are associated with a mold imbalance and uh, so it, it tested yes to joint and muscle pain fatigue and brain fog um, which I'll also then get on to what sort of was identified later on, which was really interesting. Um, and it sort of, you can sort of see the relationship between the mold and what was identified later on. Um, so it did mention that, you know, for a remedy of um, a mold imbalance 
to use neem powder. Now I don't have neem powder. Um, and I thought, oh, I wonder if um, even hemp oil could, could do it. No, that, that said no. Um, and then it also mentioned coconut oil. Well, she loves coconut oil. Uh, and I checked that and, um, yeah, I could give that to her to help with the imbalance physically. Uh, so balanced it out. Um, that was all good. Nothing else associated with the, um, and the, and the inflammation energy imbalance was also balanced up. Nothing else was associated with that. Uh, then we found that in nutrition, in a nutritional and lifestyle imbalance, um dehydration came up quite quite surprising and she does drink a fair bit of water now again i know that it uh, um it couldn't be our water the water that i give them but i still checked it and it wasn't it was um, it was just she's drinking enough i checked that she was drinking enough yes she's drinking enough um but i couldn't balance it i still couldn't balance it out so there i found an association with the reasons why her body um, is dehydrated and it was a di found in disconnection and what was found was a toxin and again there's you know quite a number of different tox toxins and when we talk about toxins we, to we again we're referring to the energy of that toxin um, and toxins can be very heavy and dense and very bad for you, of course. Um, was found pesticides. Pesticides came up. Um, and I thought, well, that's really interesting because we don't use pesticides in our backyard. And so I checked to sort of see if I could get some more information. Yes, I could get some more information. She's got something. I can hear her running. She's found a toy. <laughs> Crazy Cora. Um, yeah, so pesticides and so I checked and got the answer of it, the pesticide being outside and knowing that it's not in our backyard and knowing that we don't use pesticides, um, found out that it was actually, um, with the near the neighbor's boundary and that's all I got. I, I was asking more questions, but I was not getting any answers back. So, or I wasn't getting a yes or, um, I was getting mostly no, I, I, you know, that's as far as I needed to know. Um, so yeah, found out that, uh, there was an imbalance with the pesticide on our boundary somehow. So again, you can't go in and just go, well, I don't want you to start, stop using pesticides or doing whatever. So what we can do is we can actually balance so that the body's stronger energetically um, so that, that it doesn't affect the body uh, in a negative way. Uh, so that's what this work does. It's not about getting rid of all the bad stuff. It's about building the resilience uh, within the physical body, um, making it lighter, making it healthier, happier, joyful, um, so that when you come across those more denser kinds of energies, that you can, it's like it sort of bounces off. Um, it doesn't affect you because you can't resonate with it. Um, so we ba I balanced that up for her. And um, there was no other associations with the, the uh, dehydration and the pesticide imbalance. Um, the next one that came up was a, a tox another toxin imbalance. And it was found to be a heavy metal of mercury. Um, this related to, and I'm thinking, isn't that interesting? I'm thinking, well, where would she get, where would the, like a mercury imbalance come from? Um, and there was an association with, um, another toxic imbalance from a food ad additive of what's called humectants. And a humectant is a additive to food um where it keeps it moist it's like a preservative that keeps something moist most things um that humectants are added to um or what a humectant is that, that i sort of did a little bit of research with uh is salt and sugar now i'm thinking well i don't feed them and feed her um anything that's got you know high levels of salt or bad salt 
like table salt um, or, or sugar. Um, and even really careful if she does get any kinds of treats that they're going to be all natural and, you know, none of the artificial crap. So um, I thought, well, that's really interesting. Where could she have got that from? And anyway, so I was able to ask some more questions to sort of find out the source and sort of di didn't really give me like who. And then I just had to trust my intuition because what I got was, um, I don't know, I had an image in my mind and I'm thinking birds and because she has been rolling in bird poo lately. Um, we have um, homing pigeons next door. And so they're constantly flying over our house, um, you know, all day long. And, um, and that's the, sort of the image that I got. And I thought, okay, well, let me check to sort of see there's a relationship here with um, the heavy metal and water and because usually you know heavy metals c can be found you know um, in the environment as well as water supplies um, those kinds of things what's she got oh she's got rabbit you can stay there so uh, so then, yeah, so what I did was I checked and asked if, if, if it related to bird poo and I got the answer of yes. Um, and it was related to the pigeons. And that's all I needed to know. It wouldn't tell me, didn't want to give me any other information. Hey. It's going to destroy another toy. Uh, so all I could sort of associate it with, and I, I, I can only think that whether it's coming through even the seeds, um, the food source for the pigeons um, and the water supply because I'm pretty sure he wouldn't give his birds filtered water. Uh, most people would just, you know, use tap water. So it's an interesting thing. I'll just put that up there. Leave it. Thank you. Um, it's an interesting thing how that sort of went, hey, get down. Cora, leave it. Oh, you cheeky girl. One moment. No. Oh, goodness me. Oh, she's naughty girl, isn't she? You naughty girl. Always has to, um... Hey, don't do that. Here. Leave it. Leave it. Thank you. Drop. Drop. Cora, leave it. Drop. Drop. Thank you. Oh, they're both dropped. Okay. Just have that there. Ooh, yuck. Dog slobber and dog tails. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's just interesting in regards to what showed up there with um, mercury toxicity. Um, which, as you know, any sort of, you know, some people would know more about it than others. Um, any heavy metal can affect the brain function and certainly affect the, nerve, the nervous system. And this is what came up next. And what I found was, right, so it was an imbalance in the circuits and systems of her body. And uh, the disconnection that uh, came up was spirit out of body. So her, um, her energy of who she truly is outside of being a dog as crazy as that sounds, but it is, it's true. Her spirit was actually um, not fully in her body. And if that happens and it's at 0%, that's basically death. Um, and I could actually check what percentage of her body, uh, of her spirit was not in her body. And it was quite high, it was 88%. Quite alarming. Um, it's really strange. Anyway, uh, so I was able to just balance it. There was no association with it. Um, it was just that, yeah, for whatever reason, her, her spirit seemed to be sort of outside, whether it was, I don't know, whether she wanted, felt like she needed to want to know more, um, where she felt probably limited within her body and that she could do more for her, her family by being out. But it's, it's not very, it's not healthy to be like that. Um, because it's a disconnection. Um, so, yeah, there was no association with it. Um, it was just that I needed to balance that up. 
and bounce it up and it was then back to a hundred percent um so that was good i'm sure she sort of was feeling a bit better from that um, and then we went on to, there was no other imbalances. We then went on to trapped emotions, um, which brought up two, which were her own. Do you have to chew that? Oh dear. Dogs and chewing. Hey, you're not a, much of a chewer, are you? No. So the first, um, emotion that came up, uh, that, uh, can, could be released was pride. I'm just going to check the time. We're okay. I've got to pick my daughter up from work. Um, was pride. Now, you can have healthy pride. You know, you have, you know, high self-esteem, confidence. Um, that's a healthy kind of pride. But you can have a negative kind of pride where that's exaggerated. You know, it's over the top. Um, and it can be damaging to the body um, and to the soul. Goodness. And, um, and of course that's what it was didn't need it didn't um, we didn't need to know any more information about that um, you know and usually if it's uh, if we need to know more information then it's to do with age mostly oh you're destroying that my crazy one can you see her yeah talking about you that's we are talking about you. And then the second one, again, was her own emotion. And again, we didn't need to know any more information about it. Um, was abandonment. So we balanced and we'll release those two emotions. Nothing else um, was needed to be released or balanced uh, at the end of that. So um, that came the end of her... What? That came the end of her session. Um, and then I just checked her protective shield too, and it was already functioning at 100%. So all was sweet and good. She didn't um, really have much of a rest. Um, but we'll just sort of see how she goes over the next few days and, and see um, in relation to sort of, you know, her hyper exaggerated. Um, reactions to external stimuli stimuli so yeah so all right so um that's a little bit of the uh, information on the ERTs that I've done for them today and um yeah so if you've got any information or you've got questions in relation to um ERT sessions uh just send a message and I'm more than happy to explain them <laughs> Um, but just like with people, people can, you know, really feel the difference that, because they can talk to you. Um, but when it comes to the animals and dogs, any kind of animal, any kind of pet, it's, you can see in their behavior, you can see in the way that, you know, their, their demeanor and the way that they move, um, the changes that occur with them. Um, it's quite, uh, amazing that you can see these differences. Um, all right, so I'll leave it, leave it at that. And I hope that you've enjoyed watching and learning about uh, sort of the sessions and, and you know, what, what can be found. Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll see you again some other time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.